Hi, it's Doug Mayhew. I'm here with Brian Jones, and uh, we're going to talk about OpenXML a bit. Um, Brian, uh, I know you've just finished, uh, well, I haven't really finished a, I was going to say finish a grueling process. You still have some work to do, but you've been a busy guy the last few months. Um, you and everyone on TC45, yeah. I know you folks have met all over the world, spent countless hours on phone calls. And uh, before we get into some of the more technical stuff we want to talk about, Maybe for those folks who aren't up on what's been going on, you want to describe what your life's been full of? Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess we have a bunch of stuff that we want to talk about, but um, the the overview of kind of where we are now and how we got here, um, I think that it was like at the beginning of September when the the first uh, round of voting was done on OpenXML through the ISO process. Um, and so there had been about, I think, four months of review that had gone on uh, by the national bodies who were reviewing the specs and, and finding places where they, they thought that there were errors or things that they'd like to see corrected, improved, extended. Um, and then on at the beginning of September, they submitted the list of all of their comments um, as part of the process to the uh, ISO, and then um, all of that stuff was routed through to the, to the project editor, um, Rex Jasky, uh, who had been the editor for the OpenXML spec. And... Um, there were about 35, I think it was 3,522 comments overall um, from 40 some odd uh, national bodies, uh, different countries. Um, I don't know if anybody, most people are familiar with how it works, but basically any country has is able to participate in the ISO. Um, there are different levels of participation um, that they can uh, basically sign up for. Um, and so anybody had a chance to review the spec and then find if there were any issues with it. Um, the uh, the 3,500 3, comments um, that we got from uh, from the national bodies, uh, right away we, I mean, that's that was a pretty huge task, as yeah. you can imagine. Um, and we had about three months, three or so months, to, to try and come up with a resolution to all of those. Um, it was kind of funny because, um, you know, there was a lot of uh, campaigning and stuff that was going on leading up to it, and I know that, that one of the things that people were trying to, to scare certain countries into is saying, unless you vote no, your your comments aren't going to be dealt with. And ECMO tried to be pretty clear um, from the beginning that they were going to address every single comment regardless of whether or not the country voted yes or no. And of course, that's that's what happened. Uh, we we didn't even in TC45 we didn't even pay attention to we didn't even pay attention to who the countries were that logged the comments. All all we did is we just went and looked at each comment um, and uh, tried to go and categorize them and see if there's a way that we could kind of shrink down the amount of work. Um, and we found that there were about a thousand real like unique issues in that list of 3,500 comments. Um, a lot of them were were fairly straightforward to deal with. Um, they were great comments, but they were just editorial or, or things where you know there's no reason for debate. It was just yeah, we can definitely go and do that. And so those were pretty easy to respond to. But there were other ones that were more challenging because um, they would either impact some of them impacted uh, the actual design goals of the spec, and so that that took a lot more uh, discussion within TC45. Um, and others just uh, were comments, uh, more general comments, where we had to go and figure out, you know, what is the best way to address this. It wasn't the, the comments weren't all completely prescriptive. Um, so uh, we had an insane number of conference calls. Uh, we had an all-week meeting in, in Japan, um, and a lot of emails and, and one-off discussions. Um, but we were able to go through and, and, and address all 3,500 comments. Um, and it was an actual a pretty amazing task. Uh, everybody at TC45 was extremely, extremely proud of the work. Um, similar to the, the original spec. The original spec was a, it was a really big spec, a lot of technical content in there, right? Um, and we did it in a, in a relatively um, efficient amount of time. That, uh, that deduping process, I mean, it's a logical thing to do if you got that much work to do. And uh, just to be sure that people understand, you you wound up with, I think, I saw Alex Brown has been saying a 1,000 on his blogs. I think sounds like that's about the final number there. Um, 
you have a thousand individual issues and one of those issues that you guys wrote a response to may have been submitted by a country that voted yes and a country that voted no and they both got the same answer. Right. So kind of a good example this concept of whether voting no or yes affects yeah. how seriously ECMA took the comment. Yeah, exactly. Um, there wasn't even a way to distinguish. Yeah, there wasn't. Cases. I mean, once we got down to the, to the organization of all of them to a thousand unique issues, at that point we weren't even paying attention to who the national body was. Um, there was a there was a, a, a validation pass that, that we would do to make sure that you know if there were ten issues that were all grouped together as one to make sure that the response actually did address all ten mm -hmm. right because often I mean there there were plenty of issues where uh, the comments were word for word the same um, and that was usually because um, you know there were there were certain companies who would have representatives on national bodies around the world. And so those companies would have a list of issues that they wanted to bring, and so you'd see that same issue show up in a bunch of different mm -hmm. countries, right? And so those were really easy to group. But there were other ones where it was more conceptually the same, but the actual comments themselves were different. And so, you know, we had to go and make sure that we addressed every subtlety in the comment, because um, sometimes they would ask for slightly different things. Um, it was also a challenge because at times people would ask for, have conflicting requests. Um, for instance, there were a number of national bodies that asked for us to make the specification smaller by removing um, examples and all of the, the non-normative text. Um, but we had other company, countries who would go and ask for us to provide more examples. They'd say, oh, there aren't enough examples in this uh -huh. one or that one, right? So, you know, that was kind of a fine line of trying to figure out how to, how to make everybody happy. And, you know, it's, it's not always possible to make everybody happy, but we, we made our best attempt at that. Yeah. And, and, uh... Going through this, I know there are some, uh, so I think it's JTC1 rules about the national body comments themselves aren't really public information. I mean, we know there's been, you know, sites out there that have this stuff, but I've noticed you've started blogging about some of the details of the dispositions. As I understand it, you guys can talk freely about the content of the disposition, but not necessarily the comments that led into that, right? Yeah, that was a really, um, it was frustrating uh, for everybody on TC45 because, um, we wanted to be as open as we possibly could while still following the rules, right? And, um, and the, I mean, there's a process set up so that the national bodies have confidentiality. They can go and submit their comments, and um, they're not supposed to be published by anybody, right? It's just part mm -hmm. of this, this review process. And so uh, while we wanted to go and post all of the, our comments, um, you can't really go and post all of the responses without showing what they're responding to. Um, and we could go and try and summarize what those what the comments were without actually like giving information about the specific country. But that was a whole host of extra work and we were we were so busy just trying to get yeah. the responses themselves done. Um, so yeah, the, but what we are able to do now um, and we were able to do before uh, was if we wanted to go and write up kind of what the response was and then uh, just summarize what we were responding to, that's something that we could do um, in TC45. And so we did that in our status reports. We would go and talk about what were some of the bigger issues that were being addressed. Um, and uh, even now on my blog, I'm starting to, to try and, uh, for, for the ones that I think are, are more interesting to people, trying to go and say, hey, I know you all know about this issue already. Here's what the ECMA response is, and, but not giving away national bodies' uh, original comments.